John Dalton, barrister and historian, was born in 1792 and he died in 1847. Dalton provides us with some of the most accurate and useful information on the antiquities that were to be seen in Swords in 1838 when he visited the town. Dalton was a very prolific writer and a very pro prolific historian. As we read uh, in Dalton's History of County Dublin, there were many remains of ancient Gothic buildings present here on this particular site. He also makes the very interesting observation that the original town walls of Swords stretched out one and a half miles, taking this church site as its centre. In later days, in 1578, Queen Mary gave a charter to Swords to build another town wall two and a half miles in circumference with the focus on St. Columba's uh, Church. There's so much heritage and history to enjoy and to treasure here on this very ancient site. As we've seen, there's considerable deposition from the ruins and structures of other buildings laying on the ground here. That results in a very high level for some of the windows that, that we see here. There was at least four churches built on this particular site. The earliest one probably a Celtic wrath back in the Stone Age. And as time went on, people used the material. This particular church is built by Francis Johnson, he of GPO and St. George's Church uh, fame. He also built Nelson's Pillar. Johnson came here in Swords. He saw a lot of the material that was ready and he incorporated the material from the earlier buildings into his new structure. This was built in 1811 in the Gothic style of the day, which is a piece of the original abbey here with a round Celtic cross and the crucifix uh, through it. It's displayed in a prominent position because it shows the continuity between the medieval church which was built here on the back and which you can see in the pictures and the present situation here now. We're now stand at, standing at one of the most important historical parts of St. Columbus uh, site, namely the famous uh, round tower you, you'll see here at, at the rear. The monastic centre at Swords, centred on St. Columba, was one of the foremost ecclesiastical establishments of its day and not content with founding very many abbeys and churches throughout the length and breadth of Ireland, St. Columba also brought the missionary message of Christianity to many places both in England and in Europe, Iona off the coast of Scotland being one of the most important foundations. Before he left to evangelise England and Europe also, St. Columba left St. Finian, also called the leper, who may have suffered from this particular disease, in charge of the monastic settlement here in Swords, leading to so many places in Swords being called St. Finian in honour of that particular saint. The first thing to notice about the entrance is that the entrance to this tower would have been 20 feet below where we see it today. These are modern bricks and stones put in to provide access to the tower. The tower is 73 feet high and 26 feet of a circumference. And there have been so many theories about what these round towers were. But we feel today that there could be a number of functions for these towers, safety for the monks, prestige and renown for a very rich and well-resourced uh, monastic uh, foundation, and also lookout towers for dangers coming from the sea or other particular uh, uh, parts. This tower is a fine example of 9th century monastic Christian architecture. Many of the drawings and paintings taken of this particular site, many of them in 1790, show a low stone wall travelling from north uh, to south. This is clearly shown in the illustrations that you can see on screen. I've mentioned that the site has an ancient history probably stretching back to 8 or 10,000 BC and these people, though now forgotten, have left some of their remains behind them in this holy site 
what a length of history 8000 BC to 2023. We're walking ahead and just following John Dalton's route. He describes walking along a wall and coming down to a seated area with an old elm tree. Let's go and find that now. And just to say that when the Normans arrived in 1170, they didn't want anything to do with the original Celtic monastic site. And so they decided to build their new foundation where it is today at the bottom of the town. And we'll walk ahead. This particular road would have been the main route in Swords originally, long before the town itself was instituted, or even other public buildings made there as well. It shows just what an historic area with loads of heritage that we have here in Swords. Now we're coming to what Dalton describes as the centre for gossip and conviviality in Swords, an old elm tree which had seats and relaxing areas for it back in 1838. Let's walk ahead. Now we're just passing over the stream that John Dalton talks about. He says a, a small stream that waters this particularly pleasantly located town. And we'll walk ahead. So we're now passing one of the reconditioned gates and part of uh, Swords Park, one of the most famous parts of Swords. The old pictures show that a lot of this area was neglected and that may have been because it was associated with the English and with the ascendancy culture based on the British uh, Empire. Of course, the Pound Pub is very famous in Swords and it's still on all the maps that we see. Just worthy that this area sometimes flooded from the River Ward as well. And we walk ahead. Having descended from the west, we now begin to rise again and Swords Main Street is situated on a ridge. That's because it was meant to be kept dry and safe away from the flooding, regular flooding of the River Ward. We've arrived now at one of the most famous historic parts of Swords, namely the Anglo-Norman Castle, which was built around the year 1200. Most of the comments that Dalton makes about the castle are that it, it is in ruins and in particular the church which has been beautifully restored which we see here was also roofless without walls almost and totally derelict. Dalton makes the point that this particular building may have hosted some of the first parliaments ever carried out in swords. As we stand here we're at a point where Dalton describes there was a medieval stocks here for criminals and to give them punishment for their crimes. He says ducks and geese now hop over the stocks that used to be here. He also describes a draw well which was located here. So a lot of activity went on in this particular area and incidentally some 14 bodies were also found buried underneath this particular uh, slot. We can only admire the very fine restoration job that Fingal County Council has achieved here. Dalton describes the swords of that time as having three more chapels. One chapel dedicated to St. Catherine, another to St. Finian, and finally a third to St. Bridget. We're now entering Swords Castle itself, as we said, built around the 1200s with various additions and improvements. When Dalton visited this place, this whole area here was an orchard, producing very many different kinds of fruit. And it's hard to relate to it today, but this whole area was in total ruins, totally neglected, and what a wonderful job has been done in bringing all this heritage uh, so people can enjoy and relate to it. A very interesting feature of the remaining buildings in Swords Castle is this old 
a chimney where there would have been a fire underneath it. And if you can see the point we made before, that so much of the debris and ruins have fallen into the ground, whereas this would obviously have been uh, uh, much more prominent in the kitchen of that particular time. There's so much that we could say about Swords Castle, but that may not be possible for today. We followed in the footsteps of one of the finest historians that Swords or the County Dublin ha has ever seen, uh, John uh, Dalton. He lived in Summerhill in Dublin. He's left us a precious and accurate legacy of historical resources that many future researchers can spend time exploring and enjoying. So from Swords Castle and from Mike, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>